Hello, my name's Charlotte. I look after the youth membership scheme at Centre of the Cell. And in this video, I'm going to be talking all about personal statements. So now is a great time to start writing your personal statement, especially if you're planning to apply for medicine or dentistry, because I'm sure you know your applications are due in October. So the summer holidays is a great time to get started. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some of my top tips for writing your personal statement. And at the end, I'm going to share details of how you can submit your personal statement to us at Centre of the Cell to get feedback and comments from a university student or graduate. Let's get started with some tips. So my first tip for you is to really make sure you've done your research on your subject area or your course before you start writing your personal statement. Now, presumably you've decided what to study and you have done quite a bit of research already. But the reason that I mention this in the context of personal statements is that it's really important that you have clarified, broken down any misconceptions about a particular subject in your research. Because otherwise, when you come to write your personal statement, if you still have some of those misconceptions and if your desire to study that subject is based on a misconception, that's not going to look so good in your personal statement. So I'll give you an example to make this a bit clearer. Um, I was reading some advice on the student room forum about personal statements and there was a psychologist there saying that um, there's so many misconceptions around what the study of psychology actually is and so people often want to apply to study psychology based on a misconception of the subject which isn't ideal. Make sure you've done some really good thorough research and that you really know what your subject area or course will truly be like. So my second tip for you is to start with a plan for your personal statement. Just like when you're writing an essay for some schoolwork, you don't start by diving straight into writing the full text of the essay, uh, but you make a plan for what you're going to talk about in your essay first. So do the same with your personal statement. So of course, things you want to cover will be what course it is you want to study or which subject area, uh, why you want to study that subject and then what skills, knowledge, experiences do you have that will make you a, an excellent candidate for studying this subject. Now I know we've mentioned reflection quite a lot uh, when talking about work experience. The reason we keep going on about it is because it is really important and it is key for a, a good personal statement. So. Um, what admissions tutors don't want to see from you is just a list of all of your achievements. They want to see how you've reflected on your achievements and experiences, how they've shaped you into the person you are, who is this person who wants to study this particular subject or course. So don't be afraid to really big yourself up in your personal statement. You know, don't ever underplay your achievements. Now's the time to really shout about them. My fourth tip for your personal statement is to start by writing absolutely everything down that you think could be relevant for your personal statement. Everything that you can think of that you've done over the last few years, just get it all down on paper um, in a Word document, wherever you want it to be, um, because you don't want to forget or leave anything out. And what can happen is as you start the writing, um, you realise something you might not have thought was directly relevant before actually ties in really nicely with a point that you want to make. I would say in the beginning, don't worry about going over the word count initially. It's always better to be in a position where you've got too much material and you have to cut it down rather than barely having enough and struggling to stretch it out up to the word count. So get everything written down first um, and then you can kind of go through the process of prioritising getting in the stuff that's really crucial and important. Okay, so my next tip for you is to try to avoid using too many cliches and instead write about your unique individual perspectives and experiences. So there is a tendency to fall back on cliches in order to try and get across your passion for your subject in personal statements. Um, we've all been there and certainly I was one of those people in my personal statement saying about how passionate I was about biology because I'd loved it since I was a child. Um, but the problem with saying 
I've loved biology since I was a child um, is that it, it just doesn't give the admissions tutor much information on its own so you need to back up a statement like that with some evidence you need to then go on to talk about how you've continued being passionate about that subject why why are you so interested in it and um, how have you demonstrated and developed your passion ever since what have you been doing more recently those kinds of things it's also ideal if you can avoid using uh, quotes from famous people as well. You've only got so many words in your personal statement and the admissions tutors want to hear from you. They want your words, not somebody else's words. Finally, the last thing I would say is that once you've written your first draft of your personal statement, give yourself a good break, a few days away from looking at it before you come back to it again. And of course, get some other people to read your personal statement as well. So you can ask your parents, any family, friends, your teachers, anyone who's up for it to have a read through. It really helps to have a fresh pair of eyes to spot grammatical errors and typos. And also just to help you think about a way to rephrase a particular sentence, maybe the order needs rejigging a bit. It's really incredibly helpful to have somebody else read your personal statement. You should expect your personal statement to go through many drafts and revisions before it's ready. Uh, and that's why we say it's ideal if you can start your personal statement over the summer holidays, because that gives you plenty of time for some rewrites. It gives you time to leave it alone for a little bit and come back to it, which is really, really useful. And so uh, to that end, um, I mentioned at the beginning that we are giving you the opportunity to send in your personal statements to us to get some feedback. Um, so all you'll need to do once you've written a draft of your personal statement is email it to us at youthmembers at centreofthecell.org and you can send in your personal statement and it will be read by myself or one of my colleagues. We're all university graduates uh, or university students. So we'll have a th read through and make some suggestions, some edits, add some comments and send that back to you uh, to help you get your personal statement where you want it to be. Um, so in theory, as long as we're not overwhelmed, uh, you could have the opportunity to send your personal statement to us more than once. Um, and we'd be happy to take personal statements throughout the summer and probably into the autumn as well, since we're not able to run our usual in-person personal statement clinics. So please do email us with your personal statement um, if you'd like some help with that. And thank you for watching.